Hey my art heathens, Jade here again, and this is number two of my Draw 100 Interesting People. And I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything, but my birthday was uh, Friday, so I thought I would post this video of me as an interesting person and kind of go through a kind of a draw your life but without drawing my life and just tell you a little bit about myself. So I was born in the early 70s to a, uh, to a single mom who had six sisters. And then I spent a lot of time um, at my grandmother's house. And then my mom got married and I was adopted by the guy that she married who uh, was a professional criminal. And I don't mean that like, you know, he was uh, a bank robber or, you know, a hell hold up guy, was a uh, smuggler. And would smuggle drugs from Central and South America, Mexico. And these big old airplanes he had, DC-4s and DC-6s, and sometimes by uh, an overland route. And um, we lived in Seattle, and then we moved to this little town outside of Seattle, and that's where they kind of set up, or he did set up his operation. My mom was not kind of a hippie artist, was. She's still alive. In fact, they both are. Uh, they're divorced now, though. And now this little airport in uh, North Washington, they ran their business. And then every uh, summer, we would go to Alaska and fly fish off the beaches. We lived in, uh, when we were up there, we lived in like Kenai and um, when he ran his own business, or King Sam. And in fact, when we lived in Kenai, we lived right across from a prison in this slum called uh, Wildwood. We would, as a kid, we'd throw beers over the barbed wire fence to the Indian um, prisoner inmates. But anyways, then um, they got into their smuggling business and uh, I moved to Panama for almost a year. And we were down there. Uh, and I, he was, they were working on like a legitimate business of flying fish, but I think they are also doing their uh, clandestine stuff too. Then I moved back, um, back to the States, and then up to that little town, and went to school there. I went to junior high and high school up in Gnarly Town, and uh, met all my best friends that I still have as friends to this day. And my, uh, my significant other I met when I was 14, and... Uh, We are going to be celebrating our 24th wedding anniversary in two months, so that's that worked out well. And when I was in high school, my my last year of high school, my uh, parents got arrested by the federal government. In fact, I was going home with some friends that never been to my house, and I get there and. There's all these DEA agents running around the place. I was with my buddy uh, Nick and Yuri. <laughs> and Nick leans forward, we're in the car, and there's like 300 agents and truck dogs and everything. And we're in the car, and they're like, Nick leans forward, forward after the agent's done talking to me. And uh, he's like, dude, I've got weed in my pocket. <laughs> like, Nick, they don't care. You know. Uh, I thought it was weird. When I got my first job, they didn't, they didn't just pay me in cash because I was used to my parents getting paid in garbage bags full of cash. So that kind of puts a little scope on what it was like growing up with, uh, with professional smugglers. I'm writing an autobiographical comic book right now about what it was like growing up with drug lord parents. So uh, maybe I'll post some of those pages so you guys can check them out. If you're interested in that, leave me a, a note in the comments. So, 
I'll, I'll post them anyways because I need to need to show what I'm working on. Um, one thing about this illustration is I've been watching a lot of Vikings. <laughs> you know, the TV series. So that's why I kind of drew myself with the Floki makeup and the, uh, the Norse symbol on my forehead. And I'm always wearing a hoodie, so that's not like some kind of like or cape or something. But anyways, that's why I did that. Love that series. So anyways, back to my story. Um, yeah, then they got arrested and uh, my dad went to prison for like seven years. And then when he got out, my parents got divorced. And he hooked up with uh, who we love, who refer, lovingly refer to as his crack whore. And they started growing pot. A lot of it, like, I don't know, 50 pounds at a time. And uh, then him and the crack whore and her kids got into smoking, uh, smoking pills. And that's where, you know, when he came out of prison, he was a master electrician. And he made a lot of money. And then um, just kind of pissed it all away because of smoking the smoking oxycontins or oxycodones or whatever whatever they're called the hillbilly heroin and then got involved with some really bad dudes that were uh, like heavy duty drug smugglers again you know after he got out of prison so luckily he was such a heroin addict and a pill head that he couldn't grow his weed anymore and so when he got raided by the feds his little his pot growing operation, which I guess wasn't little, it was substantial. I think he'd grow like a thousand plants at a time or something. Um, <laughs> it, the, his all his plants were dead because he was too too much of a fuck up to go down there and take care of him. Anyways, I'm out of here, heathens. Peace. <laughs>